Hello my lovely friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joanna but you can call me Jo. One of my New Year's resolutions for 2023 was to read all the books I own. Therefore I am sort of on a book buying ban. Help me! I'm dying! And I hate to admit but it is actually working. I've read 20 books so far this year. Most of these books are books that I've had for years and I've just not touched. I have to discipline myself to not spend ridiculous amounts of money on books if I'm not going to read them. I have 29 books that I own that I have not read, so I thought we'd go through them. I'm interested to see why these books attracted me and why I bought them in the first place, so let's have a look. Here we have my 21st book of the year. I've decided to go for Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. I know nothing about this book. Uh, the only reason I picked it up was because I saw a lot of people saying really great things about it. Next up we have a book that my lovely grandma gifted me and because of this it's actually a translation of an English book. It's in Portuguese. I've been putting it off because I don't think I've ever read a full book in Portuguese but I am excited to get round to it eventually. The really interesting thing about it is I didn't realise this is actually a book by Agatha Christie, but she actually had a pseudonym. <laughs> I am excited to read the stuff that she didn't publish under her name and see if I like her writing style. Next up we have Goddesses, Whores, Wives and Slaves. This is a book about ancient Greece. The name really is fascinating and it's such an interesting title because from just all accounts you could tell that women in ancient Greece were either seen as goddesses, whores, wives or slaves. So I'm really excited to give this book a read and to delve in a bit more into the lives of actual real women. Next up, You Will Get Through This Night by the lovely Daniel Howell, also known as Dan Is Not On Fire. I met Dan last year, he's such a lovely person. This is the book he wrote when he kind of realised he didn't know what he was doing in terms of his mental health and after getting lots of help he decided to create a more practical way for people to practice mental health. So I am excited to to read this book and see if I can get anything out of it myself and put those things into practice. We have The Familiars by Stacey Halls. I picked this up not knowing anything about this. I'm assuming from the name and the cover that it's going to be a bit witchy, which I love. But we're to the east, bro! <laughs> I guess we'll see when I get round to it. Next up, we have The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock. I only bought this because of the cover. I mean, she's beautiful. And I have a real affinity for mermaids. I mean, I grew up watching like Ariel and H2O. Cleo, Nor, the condensation, and Aquamarine. I found two new men to love. And their names are Ben and Jerry. Free top to mermaid media. I look forward to reading this one and hopefully there'll be lots of fun mermaid vibes. Next up we have Free Women. I bought this book because so many people were raving about it and to be fair, Dolly Alderton has given her stamp of approval and I think I'll, I would pretty much read anything that Dolly approves because I love her as a writer. Next up we have The Silence of the Girls. I bet you cannot see that. I started to read this a while ago and I just have not picked it back up. I think I had literally just finished reading The Song of Achilles uh, and then re reading about him again in this book felt a bit jarring to me. So that's the end of the hardbacks. I thought we'd do them first and get them out of the way because they don't actually fit in my tiny little bookshelf. So now we're gonna move on to the paperbacks. One, two, three, six, eight, three, go! Ooh, matchy, matchy. We have Alias Grace by the one, the only Margaret Atwood. It seems to be about sexuality, cruelty, and mystery. So, I mean, I'm hooked, I'm there. Now that I've read It and A Little Life and all of the Harry Potter series, I think I'm no longer that scared of big books. Ah! Yes, Gaga! Yes! Hey, Mama! I finally defeated Big Book Fear, uh, so I think this will hopefully be absolutely fine. Next up, we have A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. The cover is what really got to me. 
because it just feels very intimate. There's loads of objects that might be important to the main character of this book. It's going to be about childhood and family relationships and I'm excited to follow the journey. Next up we have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Classics, I feel like you have to read it yourself to get an opinion about it. You can't really go based off of what people say. They can be so subjective to you. I don't think I have many classics at the moment. I think I've read most of the ones that I have. It will be nice to break up the contemporary books with a little bit of classic, I think. This is going to be terrible. I know it. Immediately. Yeah, immediately. This might be the most book talk book of all time. I've heard just ugh. I don't like that. Put your tongue back in your mouth. I honestly reckon I'm not going to enjoy it just based on the fact that the main character is called Lily Bloom because she's a florist. <laughs> Great creative writing. <laughs> that already I don't have high hopes for. A lot of people in my personal life have enjoyed this book, but then a lot of people online seem to be quite mixed about it. I'm kind of dreading it. I'm grateful I didn't spend money on it and I didn't actually support Colleen Hoover. I've also heard about the controversies to do with her and it just seems like a hot mess. This will have to happen at some point, so. <laughs> Next up, we have another book that is actually not in its native language. This is a translation from French. It's called Vernon Subtext 1. Uh, again, no idea what this is about. I bought this because I liked the cover. Uh, it's a bit avant-garde. This is a book that got shortlisted for the Man Booker International Prize in 2018. It's all the books that I've read that have either been shortlisted or won the Man Booker Prize haven't really been to my taste, but I'm willing to put that aside and give this a good go. Next up we have Friends and Strangers. I don't know what this book is about, but I'm assuming just from the title and also a few little hints in the blurb that it's about female friendship and I'm assuming they're gonna go from friends to strangers. Holy oh my god, I can't god. believe it! <laughs> I'm really putting that English analysis to work right now. Next up we have The Island of Missing Trees. This is definitely one of those books that was rampant on book talk. It seems that a girl goes back to an island where her parents were born and she basically discovers that things are not exactly as they seem. And you're watching Disney Channel. Hamnet is of course a play on Hamlet, which is one of Shakespeare's most acclaimed plays. I am a sucker for Shakespeare. I cannot sit down and read one of his plays. I'll read slash watch any media that has been inspired by it. She's the Man is one of my favourite movies ever. I see you through your window as I'm standing on the tree outside. What the fuck is going on in here on this day? It's a novel inspired by the son of a famous playwright, a boy whose life has been all but forgotten, but whose name was given to one of the most celebrated plays ever written. Yup! Yup! Catch Bert's Way. I bought this because the Goodreads rating was pretty good. If the rating is below four stars, I do typically leave it there because I want to maximise my enjoyment whilst reading as much as I can basically so I do typically go for books that have a better rating because there's a higher chance that I'll enjoy it. What I didn't realise is that this is actually part of a series so I'm a bit stumped as to what to do with it. I might read it and see if I like the writing or I might splurge and buy the other books. But then, I don't know, because that, that might be a risk. I might not enjoy the series. It seems to be about a detective, so I can only hope that this is an adventure for only this book and that it doesn't bleed into the other books that I haven't read. So, should be fine, hopefully. Next up, we have Alchemy and Rose. We're not going to look at the side because I was a dum-dum and I left this on the window. God, Karen, you are so stupid! As you can see, it was buy one, get one half price. I literally had no reason to pick this up. Um, so, I guess we'll have to see. 
We have Little Fires Everywhere next. I've heard such great things about the TV show, to the point that I didn't even realise it was an adaptation of a book. If I enjoy it, I'll give the TV show a go. I really know nothing about it. I'm assuming... it's a thriller? We have The Wildflowers. I'll be totally honest, I just picked this up because of the cover. Seemingly it's about a family and their secrets, so I reckon the main character is just going to act as a detective and try to figure out as much as they can about their own family. Next up we have The Long and Short of It, which seems to be a collection of short stories. Again, it seems to be about history and time travel, which is really cool. It's not really a subject I read much about, so I'm excited actually. Yeah, can't wait. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, a gothic queen. I have previously started to read this before, um, and I just kind of randomly stopped. <laughs> I actually have a funny story. Um, an ex-boyfriend of mine, um, he once came round and saw my bookshelf and he goes, mm, not many classics on here are there? Excuse me? I was just like, okay you pretentious dick. <laughs> it flame, flames, flames on the side of my face. I don't think you need to read classics to consider yourself someone who likes literature. In this house we don't have time for snobby literature bros, we just don't. THE AUDACITY! Read what you want, read what you like. Next up we have Drag Noir. I have no idea what this book is about. I think it was Violet Chachki who recommended this on one of her YouTube videos and I was like, yeah, I'll buy that book and I'll read it. Shut up and take my money! And I still haven't read it. But there's literally a RuPaul quote on the blurb. I'm not kidding. It literally says, when the going gets tough, the tough reinvent. You're an inspiration to all of us. I mean. <laughs> End quote, RuPaul. What the hell is going on? Genuinely no idea what this has in store for me, um, but I'm along for the ride, I guess. We have Shaggy Bane up next. I picked this up because I've heard very good things about it, but I've also heard that it's incredibly sad. So I will probably wait a few months. I think reading A Little Life has just made me want to avoid uh, crying over a book for a little while. Next up we have The Saint Zeta Society. I've never heard of this book. I picked this up on holiday. I just went to the duty free and I picked up the first thing that popped up. You just never know when you buy books on holiday. I feel like they can be so hit or miss. So yeah, I guess we'll see, but hopefully it'll be a decent one at least. We have probably the most deranged book I've ever attempted to read next. American Psycho. This is such a good cover with the blood. Are you kidding? It's so good. Stop it. Charlie X yet snatch my way. Um, you can tell that I've attempted to read this because I, I was flicking through it and I have a train ticket in here. I, it's on page 344, so I got, look how far I got, and I just stopped reading. Why? Why would you do that? I don't know why I stopped reading this. Anyways, this is from May 15th, 2017, because I remember enjoying reading it, um, I just, I'm not sure why I stopped, maybe it got a bit graphic, but I'll probably read this very soon. I loved The Secret History, and I've heard very good things about The Goldfinch, so... It's a no-brainer for me. It's one of those books I really have no idea what I'm getting into. To be fair though, I was exactly the same with The Secret History. I knew it was sort of like Dark Academia vibes. I could have never predicted all the mess I read when I read that book. And finally, we have One of Us is Lying. I love a little bit of young adult. It's what got me into reading in the first place. I'll never speak ill about it. I think it's about a murder and I'm assuming there's a few people that are suspects. I'm really glad I had a little look through my physical to be read list. I think it's just actually made me a bit more excited for all these books. I definitely just want to stick to my word and get this task done. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you've read any of these let me know what you thought about them, I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Leave me a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want, and ring the bell for notifications of when I next post. See you later, bye!